Yeah, um, looks perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, I, I didn't know if everybody would know about Cordo or not. Uh, does, does everybody here know about Cordo and have used it? I'm seeing, a, I got it one thumbs up. Most anybody people in the room say yes. Um, okay, fine. So I'll, I'll kind of not spend time really on, on what Cordo is. Um, but I guess most of you probably have used it with R. I decided to try Cordo um, in a Python course. So let me kind of breeze past all the, the cool slick stuff that Cordo can do. It's gonna make my talk a lot shorter. Um, okay, let, let me actually just stop my chair for a minute and then just tell you guys about it so you can see me. Uh, so basically last semester I had a course that uh, was called Python for Data Science and it was taken by our entering MS data science students. Uh, these are students who are coming into the master's program, but some of them had very limited programming experience. There was a big range. And for their final project, they had to do uh, like a typical sort of data analysis project using the Python skills we learned in the course. Uh, and I decided, what the heck, let, let me try having them do it in Cordo. Uh, part of it was about reproducibility that we'd been focusing on things like version control. Um, and, and I like the idea that with Cordo, you can execute the code and produce the document as we're used to doing in our markdown, uh, but now students would be able to do it in Python. So I, I consider this to be very experimental because Cordo was new. I was new to Cordo myself. And certainly my students, not only had they not used Corto, uh, they, they had not used LaTeX. A lot of them had never used our markdown. Uh, so I, I kind of figured, let me try and, and I'll be sort of flexible with how it goes. By flexible, I mean that for most of the students, I told them, you know, put, put all your code in the, the Cordo Markdown file and have everything be generated when you render it. But I, I said, there's, let me be flexible that if you think that there's something that it's not gonna work out for and you wanna just um, import, let's say your image file into your report, fine. So, so I'll sort of allow that. Um, I gave the students two options for how to create these reports. I gave them a, a sort of starter file as a QMD uh, and had them use it inside VS Code. I'll demo that in a second. And as an alternative, I gave them a starter Jupyter notebook and we, we rendered that at the command line. So for the students who were very comfortable in Jupyter notebook, they had that option. I also sort of encouraged them to do QMD. Uh, so, okay, let me, Go back to my share and, and I'll show you the, the VS Code add-in, which is very nice. Okay, so uh, here's just a, a very short QMD file um, that I distributed to students, although I, I gave it a new name. So um, you have just the, the YAML at the top and we've specified the, the Jupyter kernel underneath. And I showed them different heading styles, an equation. Uh, th this is the, the code chunk that comes in the Cordo demos. And VS Code was a tool that my students were familiar with. They'd been using it all semester. Uh, so, so that part felt fine, but I had them in install the Cordo extension. And what that extension gives you is this nice rendering capability where you just click on render. It'll churn for a minute or two, and then the rendered preview will pop up, uh, just like you're used to when you're using our studio. Just give it a minute to churn. PDF is a lot slower. Okay, so there's my rendered file. And it's very nice, you, you can change it on the fly and re-render. The, the re-rendering is much faster and you can sort of do all this in real time and you can see the report next to it. Um, so I found that this, this was really nice. And if you're coming from the LaTeX world and you're used to this, it, it just was very sort of comfortable for me and, and the students seem to be uh, happy with that. Um, for those who prefer Jupyter Notebook, 
So they had the option to start with this kind of um, Jupyter Notebook starter file and do the rendering into the final report. I found that um, about 60% of the students used QMD as the basis and the other 40% used a Jupyter Notebook as the sort of underlying source. Um, here's an example, a snippet from one of my students rendered reports. Um, and, and I was happy with how this went. And more importantly, I, I did not hear any complaints from students about Cordo. I don't know if they complained behind my back or not, but and nobody came to me with any grievances saying, oh, this is too difficult. Uh, so I considered the experiment to be successful. And now this semester I'm teaching uh, a capstone course for our undergraduates. And I decided I'll sort of build off the good momentum. Um, in theory, they can use any language that they want, but they, they're all using Python. It's, it's a small class, only six students. So um, this semester, I, I set up a, a template repo for their capstone projects. Um, we, we spoke at the beginning of the term about good practices and reproducibility. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this paper in uh, close computational biology. It's called Good Enough Practices in Scientific Computing. And um, as you can see from the journal, it's, it's not written for data scientists, um, which actually I liked. It, it was just a sort of light and easy to read document that, that gave a lot of the, the most important practices in reproducibility, version control, collaboration, project organization. So they have a, a sort of recommended file structure and I decided we'll, we'll follow that. So um, for the capstone projects, I set everyone up with a folder for their data files, uh, a doc folder that's gonna have a, any kind of written artifact from their project, uh, results for any kind of output from running their script, a source folder for their scripts, um, an environment file, and the README. Um, so I, I didn't mention to this group of students that there was an option to start from Jupyter Notebook. Um, instead, I, I had them use Cordo from the very beginning to write up their project proposal. So um, I gave them this skeleton code for the project proposal, and I included a bibliography file also so that they could use uh, BibTeX. So here's what the, the proposal looks like. And I you know, tried to show a little bit of everything, bullets and headings and hyperlinks. And this way it was a, a template that they, they just had to fill things in. So it was a very sort of low barrier way for them to get started and get comfortable with Cordo. Uh, what they're doing for their final report is actually not going to be a rendered PDF document. I was sort of inspired by some of these cool blog posts. Here's one by David Robinson, where he analyzes the, the script of Love Actually, the, the movie. I don't know if you guys have seen this post, but it's very cute. And I thought like, yes, this is fun. This is a lot more um, exciting to read than a, a rendered PDF report. And my students are not going into academia. They're, they're not going to become research scientists. They're going to work at a company when they graduate. And I thought that this would be great to have in their portfolios to have a cool blog post. They can have interactive elements and it's so easy to do with Cordo. And I'm just gonna stop my share. Uh, it's so easy to do with Cordo because it, it's literally just one, one click different to render to HTML rather than PDF. So um, the students, uh, who are in this capstone project will produce a, a final blog post. And I said, if you want something that's very formal, so write a formally written scientific report and it'll just be an HTML. But if you wanna make it a, a more um, sort of engaging writing style where you, where you write the hook at the beginning and, and do it in a blog post style, then you can do that. Um, the students are making a lot of interactive graphics and widgets that, that will go in their posts. So uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out, but it seems like so far, everybody's been um, very comfortable with Cordo and the repo structure. So, uh, so far so good. I guess maybe next year I'll report back uh, if anything terrible happened in between now and the end of the semester. Um, okay, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs>